welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is this is the second instalment of Three Continents, One Palette. And this time, because it's spoopy season, which please, it's my pleasure. So, Nona has done an eye look. Laura has done an eye look. We have all used. It's my pleasure. The question is, what was the challenge this month that we gave ourselves? Will our looks be similar? Or will they be different? Sweetie Pie, there is only one way to find out. You're going to need to watch this. You're going to need to watch Nona. You're going to need to watch Laura. Now, isn't that a fab lineup? Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Look at that. I can wink without it looking painful because I don't have Botox. Yes, that's shade. If you know who it's aimed at. Good for you. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right. Now, those of you who are long-term viewers know that I have natural daylight and LED strip lights behind my camera. The weather today is uh, <laughs> not being helpful. <clears throat> so if the lighting changes throughout this, I am really sorry. I'm going to do my best in post-edit to keep it as accurate as possible. Right, I will have told you in the intro, this is a continuation of the Three Continents, One Palette, with myself, Nona and Laura from Gold Star Work. So, now you know, even when I'm doing a collab, or I say you know, if you're new to my channel, you won't. Hi, hello, welcome. Um, I'm a teaching channel. One of the things that when I was first getting into makeup and trying to follow tutorials was that it was really frustrating that people didn't zoom in far enough, you couldn't see what they were doing, they sped blending up, they cut blending out, they'd do one eye on camera and one eye off camera. And I always said if ever I started a channel, it would be so that anybody, even someone who'd never picked up a brush before, would be able to follow my tutorials. So, that being said, I'm also really struggling at the moment because to go along with my arthritis through three quarters of my spine and in my hip, my sciatica and my fibromyalgia, I've also, thanks to a side effect from a different pain med my GP tried me on, combined with an allergic reaction to a plant in my mother-in-law's driveway, got a dose of cellulitis on my leg that I'm dealing with, which is starting to heal, but in the process of healing, feels like the worst gravel rash, sunburn, and someone having a go at my leg with a cheese grater you could imagine, combined with someone pouring gasoline on it and setting a light to it. So, uh, on the upside, it is distracting me from all my other pains. On the downside, sleep. What is sleep? I don't think I've had any sleep. Uh, so if I yawn through this, I apologise. I do have an energetic drink and I'm hoping it's going to keep me awake for the sufficiency of this film. Now, because of these things, I may be blending a bit slower than you would like. This is absolutely fine. There is a speed widget up here somewhere. Please feel free to use it. I won't be offended. There's times when I have so many films that I need to watch in one day, I have to watch them on one and a half speed, otherwise I'd never get through them all. Right, that being said, 
face is washed, moisturised, SPF and primed. Let's get you zoomed in. I'm using my usual antiperspirant primer, details of which are listed in the description box below for those of you who also struggle with facial sweating. Um, and the eye primer that I'm using is my Crow and Pebble. For those of you who are wondering, this is the new pot because I finally finished the other pot. Um, I do have a discount code for them. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. As far as I know, I don't own from it. I don't think I do. They've not said anything about it. Um, what I love about this one is it goes on absolutely dry. There is no stickiness, no tackiness at all. So you don't have to set the primer before you go in with colour, which means you get full colour impact, but you can blend straight away. And although it's not sticky, you don't lose any of the impact from the colour. Now, I have got deep set eyes, which are sometimes referred to as double lidded eyes. Now, a lot of people that have this are mistakenly told or mistakenly think that they have hooded eyes. Now, there is a very big difference between the two and there's a very big difference between how you deal with each eye. Now, when I'm looking straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid with my brows relaxed from inner to outer corner, so I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if your static lid completely covers right down to your lash line, part or all of that mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded eye, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. If I cover, because this is the eye that I'm blind with, if I cover my visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back away out of sight. And if I cover the visible static lid and do the same, you can see I've got a patch of lid there that also tucks back in. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that gives us the same issues that people with hooded lids get. Now, you can follow any tutorial you see by using an adaptation to how lucky people with normal eyes can do theirs. So, if you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and on your static lid, sketch out where you want your new crease to fall. Obviously, this is going to reduce the space from your crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller brushes than the person doing the tutorial and you'll be fine. Um, I always leave a gap, or I, unless I'm doing an editorial look, I leave a gap between the colour and my brow. If your gap between your, if your new sort of like lid space is that small, you may find you have to go right up to your brows. If however, you have deep set eyes like myself, all we have to do when we are blending the colour through our crease is to every so often sit back, relax our brows and just check we've come up high enough that we can see the colour when our brows are relaxed. So, two very different ways of dealing with two very different eye shapes. So, this is a the purple month and we always try and set a challenge for ourselves. And the challenge this month is to only use the shimmers in the palette. Now, there is one shade in this palette called Pretty Cruel, which is a matte but has glitter in it. Um, Personally, I think that's cheating, so I'm not going to use that. I am just going to use the five shimmer shades in the palette, which look like that. Didn't think that one through, did I? There we go. So, that's the colour scheme for today. Let's take that off the back of my hand before I end up wiping it everywhere. Because I am... A klutz. Right. Uh, in my description box, I've got a film saying which brushes do I recommend. 
and I'm going to go in with some of the um, Royal and Lang Nickel brushes today. But these are not expensive, these are like two quid each. So this is the Chic Pro Crease Brush, basically it's a round, loosely packed brush. Now I'm doing my base afterwards because blending a shimmer, you're going to get fallout. No matter how well you do it, no matter how well you tap off, you're going to get fallout. So I'm going to start off with Earthshine, which is the lightest of the shimmers. And I'm going to start by applying that up here. Now obviously shimmers are not designed to be blended out like mattes are, so they can take a little bit more work sometimes. Um, what you will find is if you can blend them well enough, you'll blend a lot of the shimmer away and it'll leave you with the base colour of the shadow. And that's what I'm aiming for today. So, who are the ladies that I am collabing with? Well. I'm pretty sure regular viewers will know who Nona is because I have collabed with that wonderful lady many, many times, both on her own as part of the Bitches of Eastwick in last month's Three Continents One Palette film um, and in multi channel collabs. And most recently, I did, um, I was part of a collab that did a tribute to her beautiful baby dog Mojo who unfortunately had to take a trip across the Rainbow Bridge. Um, she is by far the nicest person on YouTube. I have never heard her say a bad word about anybody. Even the particular YouTuber that is the reason behind the Bitches of Eastwick, find the first Bitches of Eastwick film that I'll explain it to you. Um, even then, she was totally polite about the person, which I wasn't. Anya wasn't. Nona was. She's just such a good-hearted woman, she really is. She's got a heart the size of Texas, that woman, she really has. Um, and I absolutely adore her. So, this has gone on okay, actually. I'm going to keep with the same brush. I'm not going to wipe it off because I'm just going in with a deeper colour and the same colour spectrum. So I'm going to go in with a Do or Do. Oh, good lord, some of the names on this is ridiculous. Right, Do or Do. And I'm going to start that one just a little bit further down. As you can see, same technique, circles towards the nose in this direction and then away from the nose in this direction. It gently moves your lid around because if you're 45 like me and you've lost 14 stone, you, uh, your eyelids move. Um, this side I do have really deep creasing here where the eye was pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital when I was five years old before I went blind um, so I do sometimes have to stretch that lid out to get the colour to actually go on properly but do not stretch your lids out if you do not have to this particular technique will work with most fine lines because it's very gently moving the skin around to make sure you don't get any barcoding or white striping bits going on. So yes, that's Nona. She is just a wonderful woman, she really is. And she is obviously in the Americas continent. Then we have Laura from Gold Star Work. She's actually an artist. Um, both ladies have taken part in my pick series um, and I'm absolutely delighted that the first um, photo that 
Laura chose was a piece of her own artwork. Well, that's amazing. I love that. I, I just... It puts a little bit of extra pressure on me because it's me then interpreting her eye look, her, her, her um, actual artwork rather than just a photo that she's chosen. But it's also an honour that she trusts me enough to do an adequate portrayal of her work. This is so shiny. It's like the 70s all over again. <laughs> I feel like I should be going, night fever, night fever. You know how to use it. Right. I'm losing the plot here, folks. I really am. Can you tell? Uh, do I want to go in? Yeah, I think I will. I'm going to go in with bare minimum. Again, same brush, not taking the colour off. And I'm going to run that just above my natural crease line. Just to help build the gradient up a little bit. So Laura is, again, she has, because of her artist background, her understanding of colour and colour theory and how colours work together is second to none. It really is. Um, she did a, a film on her channel not so long ago where she said about the, um, the uh -huh Honey palette from Colourpop, the yellow one, where everyone was sort of thinking, oh, you can only deepen a yellow with either an orange or a brown, and she showed you so many other colours uh, that you could deepen yellow with, including colours that I hadn't even considered um, and hadn't realised would work. So she is a wealth of information on colour theory and colour blending and you can mm -hmm. learn so much from her. I have learned mm -hmm. so much from her. Um, you know, it's, like, it, it's just, it's, she's amazing to watch, she really is. And she is in New Zealand, which falls under the continent of the Australasian. I, of course, am in Europe, even though my government at the moment is trying to take us out of it. Let's let's not go there. I am not happy about Brexit. In fact, I'm absolutely bloody fuming about Brexit. But, there we go. Right, I've actually got... I know this looks filthy, but it's because it's stained. Um, but it is literally fresh out of the washing machine this morning. It's just a uh, flannel, face flannel washcloth. And I'm going to use this to take the colour off of this brush before I pop it back in the pot. Um, I prefer this to a colour switch, it's, it's much more gentle on your bristles, especially if you've got natural um, hair brushes. This one isn't, this is a synthetic, but you can see it takes the pigment off really well without stressing the brush. I'm just going to make sure that all the pigment's off of this one. Oh no, there's a little bit still in there. I'm going to go in with another Chic Pro from Warren and Langnickel. This is the eyeshadow brush. And rather than being a round blending brush, this is a more oval one. So I can target it more through the crease and not blow it up the eye too much. As I said, you're going to get a fallout. I'm really not worried about that. I'll deal with it later. And I'm going to go in with Chiclet which is this gorgeous, very similar to my wedding dress colour. Look at that. And I'm going to just target that on the outer corner. I don't really want to go further than that. And I'm going to do the tiniest, tiniest little blending circles as I can just to soften the edges out because I still want to be able to see this beautiful um, red purple, sort of like a burgundy purple. And I'm going to carry this onto the outer corner of my mobile lid. Okay. 
And I hope you can see there the, the difference that makes, just deepening up that outer corner. And now I'm going to do exactly the same this side. So let me take it to there. I can show you a bit easier this side because obviously I can actually close the eye, which is great. Um, you can see I'm not moving it up the eye at all, I'm literally just blending along the colour just to soften the edge a little bit. And then adding some to the outer corner here. You can do an all shimmer look, there's no reason why you can't, they can be extremely impactful. Unfortunately, when you use a shimmer, even with deep set uh, wrinkles, you can actually get it to blend nicely. I'm happy with that. Happier than I was expecting to be with that. Got to be honest. I'm always honest with you. I'm a crap liar. I always have been. You're going to know if I'm telling you the truth or not. And it always will be the truth because I just, I can't be doing me lying. I can't. I just don't. I have no time for liars at all. So I'm just going to use, this is just my cellar water. Oh, I might have to get a fresh pad actually. As I was saying, this is just my cellar water on a, on a cotton pad. Rude. Really? My order has been delivered to a safe place. Great. Didn't even knock the front door. And I don't have a safe place at the front of my house. So once I've tidied this edge up, I will be... Actually, no, I might as well finish it off. I think I know where they're going to put it. I'm going to stand it behind a bloody bin. And thankfully, it's not bin day today. Hate when Yard will do that. Right, this is a Morphe M321 brush. And I'm going to go into Mr. Sandman, which is the softest of all of the shimmers, and I'm going to wet this because it's yeah. I'm just going to use a setting spray. Never put a wet brush into a packed pigment, even a shimmer. Never ever 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 do it. And always dry the ferrule off. I just sort of tuck it in my fingers like that and twist it you don't want the liquid getting down into the bristles and loosening the glue. And I'm going to pop this onto the two thirds of the lid, but so far I haven't attacked with that any colour yet. This is a fantastic almost duochrome the way it reflects the light lovely right. dry the brush off again because we're about to go back into the pigment it's just send me bring me a dream bum 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 make it make it and I never see Sorry, folks. I'm having one. Of, this is what happens when I'm sleep deprived. I'm just going to stretch the lid out very gently for this bit because I know when I'm putting shimmers on my mobile lid, I have to do this. Otherwise, it packs into the crease, the deep crease that I've got there. I refuse to call it a wrinkle, it's just a crease. Um, and then throughout the day, as I move, it all cascades down my face, which is horrific. Right, I am going to pause you. I'm going to go and find that blasted parcel and find out what it is. I'm also going to pop some foundation and everything on. And I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you. So, you won't notice a single thing. I'll be back instantly. See you right now. Right, 
I am back. As you can see, I decided on purple brows because, well, to be quite honest, it felt rather appropriate in the occasion. Uh, I used the Revolution um, pigment pomade in royal purple. Uh, it's a bit worrying actually, I've got quite a few of theirs and I haven't seen them on the website for a while. So I'm not sure if um, they're undergoing uh, rebranding, maybe a change in packaging and that's why we're not seeing them but it's a bit, it's a little bit frustrating to say the least because there are a lot of other colours I wanted to get and didn't so yeah not good. Right this is actually the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette um, normally when I'm doing colours under my eye I'll go in with a deeper colour and then blend it out with a lighter colour. However, that's when I'm using matte shadows. When I'm going in with a shimmer, because I'm aware of how much fallout you can get, I don't want to manipulate the shimmer too much. So I'm going to go in with a thicker brush and just blend just the one colour out. And I think I'm going to go for Chiclet which is the deepest purple that I put here. I'm just going to really, really carefully and gently buff that along the lower lash line. The package was indeed behind the bin and it was a Colourpop order, which when you've been waiting for something for weeks to come from America and you've paid the bloody tax on arrival and the 10 bucks shipping. It's a bit annoying when it's left in the wet, in the mud, behind the bin. So, but it was a luster dust, which I might actually use today as my highlight, because it was quite pretty. Uh, and it was a orange super shock shadow because spoopy season, again, seems appropriate, um, and it was a green cream gel liner, because um, I've been using the yellow and the orange one of those as brow pomades, because I couldn't get the Revolution one, so I've got the green one of those to save me having to keep mixing a blue and a yellow together. Alright, so this is the, the Luster Dust, that's the packaging. And this is shade Princessa. And I'm just tapping it into the lid. It's, it's a lot thicker than most highlighters. Um, if you think of most loose highlighters as being the equivalent of, say, um, salt in terms of its thickness, this is more like icing sugar. This really sticks together. This is a lip brush that I bought about a decade ago from eBay. I'm just going to pop some of this up under the tail of the brow. Not that it's going to be as impactful as it usually is because obviously it's a full shimmer look but I still like to have the, the lighter effect there. And then into the inner corner and I just like to keep it so that I run it under the tear duct and just blend it into the colour underneath the eye as well. I just think it it completes the, the look nicely and with my eye shape works really nicely. Right, I'm going to pause you one more time while I chuck some more of this luster dust over my face, put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with my hair. I'll be back for the final look. So, see you right now. And there we go. 
as always my hair is doing whatever the heck it wants to uh, I put the luster dust on it's a lot more subtle than I would normally go for in a highlight but it's quite pretty not me but it's quite pretty the mascara I used is the Benefit Bad Girl Bang and the lippy is the Ciate Liquid Chrome in shade Zodiac because I, th I, th I felt that the the sort of two-tone bluey pinky purpley hint would nicely offset a uh, eye look. So what do you think? Did I do well? I wonder what the other girls looks are going to be like. The only way you can find this out is to go across to their channel and find out. So don't forget to check out Nona and don't forget to check out Laura. Uh, if you are one of my 4F babies, please check you're still subscribed because as ever, I gain a subscriber, YouTube takes a subscriber. So please, even if I'm still appearing in your suggested videos, uh, just double check you are still subscribed. And if you have chosen to ring that notification bell, just make sure it still says all notifications because apparently... People are not getting told about money films. If, however, you are new to my channel and you've come here either from Nona or Laura's, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I'm hoping you enjoyed the film. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing you liked it just a little bit. So it would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family. It's very simple. You hit the subscribe button. It's free. You ring the bell and you choose all notifications and then you get to enjoy more of this madness. Speaking of more of this madness, once you've watched Nona's and Laura's, you have many, many, many films on my channel you can watch through while you're waiting for the next instalment of Three Continents on Ballad. So, all well, that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.